Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Adam, this is my channel Adam Sews and this is my five essentials on my sewing machine video that was the lovely hashtag that was created by Michelle from Michelle Sews again. So I wanted to come to you today and talk to you about my five essentials on my machines. And I am going to break this down into the two machines that I use on a regular basis. I do use an overlocker and a cover stitch at separate um, at separate times, but my main sewing is done on either my Juki or my other machine, which is a Benina, which is to the right hand side of me, which I will go through in a moment. So my five hand uh, my five handmade essentials. I'm stuck with this five handmade essentials in my brain. So my five sewing machine essentials on the Juki are these. One is the long extension table. I always make um, a lot of bags, I make a lot of quilts, I make a lot of things where I need a large flat surface. I am going to shortly in the next few months, I hope, be upgrading um, to a fully industrial Juki um, as I am finding that I am using this way more than I thought I ever would um, when I bought it and I just wanted to, I just want to go for a fully um, a fully industrial machine with a separate motor because I don't want to burn this one out. The Juki QVP, this is, so this is a TL2200 QVP Mini. It is the miniature version of their long arm machine that you can buy, which is a TL2200 QVP standard size. This um, comes as standard with a whole host of feet um accessories everything else that you could ever want from a straight stitch machine it is straight stitch only but it will sew through pretty much anything it will sew through leather it does amazing um free motion embroidery it fits on my quilt frame really well which is one of the main things which is why i will be keeping it because it does have its own advantages over a fully industrial so my five handmade things five handmade five essential sewing machine things are one is the extension table the extension table on this is really big you don't have to remove it as well as change your bobbin because it has a flap which you open up here and then you can open up this flap here to gain access to your bobbin it is a side loading bobbin um as most semi-industrials are because the needle faces the back of the needle faces the inside of the machine rather than facing the back of the machine so the first thing is the um extension table the second thing is a thread cutter the thread cutter on this machine is lightning fast and it is like chalk and cheese in comparison to what the thread cutter on the banana is like and on other machines that i've used in the past of automatic needle uh, automatic thread cutters the thread cutter on this is literally you press the button and it's cut. That's the thread cut. That's how fast it is. On the Benina, it is quick, but the Benina goes, right, you've pressed the, th the thread cutter. I'm going to put the needle down. I'm going to pull the needle back up. Then it'll be cut. And that little process takes so much longer than on here. And when you were doing multiple rows of quilting and you need to quilt panels one after the other, after the other, after the other, this thing cannot be beaten when it comes to thread cutting. And the fact that it's on the um, foot pedal as well makes it even faster. So number three is the ability to stitch through multiple layers. My Juki will stitch through most things that I've thrown at it. There are a few things sometimes where it's gone, oh, hang on a minute, I am in a semi-industrial machine, what are you asking of me? And that is understandable. Uh, the fourth one is the needle up, needle down function. It has to have a needle down function for what I use it for. I do a lot of binding and if I need to pause and reposition the binding, I need the needle to stay down and hold on to what I've done so far. And the fifth one is the fact that it has a great big reverse arm lever on it here. This may not seem like a big deal to some people, but the fact that this is so big means that if actually, in fact, if you're, excuse me for putting my back to you, but if you're working on something here, and you actually can't let go of it, you can actually lean over and use your elbow to hit reverse. So if you need to hold on to something and keep it really super precise and still, you can use your elbow for the reverse, which is why I think it's made to be this big. It might not be, it might just be there for ease of access, and it might not be used for contortionists like me that like to use it with my elbow every now and then. So that is my five essential sewing machine things on 
this machine. So the next um, machine that I use on a regular basis is my Benina 570QE. And this has a different whole host of different requirements that I need from a machine. This needs to be able to do everything basically that the other machine can't do. And that is every other type of stitch that you could need um, or want. This um, machine will basically do pretty much everything except from cook your breakfast on a Sunday morning when you've been up too late on a Saturday night. But it does do pretty much everything else. So the the other things that I wanted from a machine is I wanted a machine that one could do a decent zigzag, can do a decent buttonhole and will do all of those other utility stitches that I need from a machine. So when I am garment sewing, I tend to use my Benina. The Benina accuracy on the stitch is um, it's literally impeccable. You cannot it cannot be beaten in my eyes. Um, the buttonholes on a Benina, I know that there are a million other machines out there that will do buttonholes. I've owned quite a few machines. I've had a lot of Janomis, I've had a lot of Jukis, and I tend to find that Juki do a really, really good straight stitch machine. They do really, really excellent quality overlockers. Um, when it comes to their computerized machines, they just don't really sit very well with me. It's not that they're bad, I just don't really seem to get on with them as well. Whereas Benina, I tend to prefer the bobbin layout. It's got a front loading bobbin. Um, it has a jumbo bobbin, which is really good. Um, so I will get on to my five essentials from my Benina. So as I said before with my Juki, one of the essentials that I like is the fact that it has a um, extension table. I like a big workspace when I'm working. I think it's the quilter in me. I like to have a large area. I think it supports your work better when you're making clothes um, or if you're making quilts or whatever you are making. I think it's always better to have the support of an extension table if you've got the capability of having one. That said, it does have a really good free arm if you're doing cuffs or if you're doing neck bands or if you're doing anything that requires you to sew in a round. The extension table is removable, it's really easily removable and it has a clear panel on it here as well so that you can see through to access your bobbin. Which brings me on to my second thing. The second thing is bobbin size. I cannot stand winding bobbins halfway through a project because it drives me mad. Nine times out of ten, it, it, it runs out at the point when you're probably about ten stitches away from finishing a seam. The Benina bobbin is absolutely enormous. Um, it comes in, they are their own bobbin. They're not the same as other machines. So the jumbo bobbin on a Benina is huge. So if I put that in comparison to a standard size bobbin, which I do have one here. So that's a Benina bobbin, that's a standard bobbin. And I don't know whether you can see just quite the size difference and the thickness in difference as well. So the Benina bobbin holds pretty much, it feels like it holds nearly a whole entire reel of thread. Um, obviously doesn't hold as much as that, but they, the other thing as well is they go in one way round um, so you can never get your bobbin in the wrong way around. They have a metal side and a plastic side. The metal side is their little metal inlays that con make contact with the back of the bobbin so that it can tell you when your bobbin's about to run out. You thread it the same as you would pretty much any other bobbin. It goes through a little tension disc and then you go through a little hook. It pushes in. It is front loading like an old fashioned sewing machine because if it's not broke, don't don't fix it sort of thing. So it's got a front loading bobbin, you trim off the thread, you close the door. It's got a little sensor inside the door as well. So it, if you are gonna run out, it warns you well in advance rather than when you're actually at the most crucial point of sewing. Um, the other thing as well that I love about the Benina, one of the five um, essentials is the fact that the feet are solid pieces. So the feet on a Benina, you literally flip down a little lever and your whole entire foot comes off which means that the feet are really, really solid. They are really, really stable and they are really durable. They also have sensors on top of them so that your machine knows what to do with the foot that you've got on. This is a standard quarter inch foot. Um, as you can see, it is really, really accurate. It has increments on it as well. So if you're pivoting around corners, you can see where the quarter inch is from the previous scene that you've done as you're turning to make sure that you can line up a quarter inch on a right angle. Um, so they literally just slip on, slip off, um, and they've got a little lever that comes down. And that is my third thing that I love about my Benina. The fourth thing is the buttonhole. So uh, the buttonhole on a Benina, I, as I said earlier, I 
personally have never found a machine that does a buttonhole better than a Benina. I've had three three Beninas. I've had the 570, the 1230 or 1280, I can't remember which one it was now, I think it's 1280. And I've also had a Benina semi-industrial, which was a 950, I think, or an 850. I can't remember, one of the two. Um, so the buttonhole on a Benina is as I say, is excellent. Um, it never, ever seems to fail when it comes to a buttonhole. It doesn't matter what fabric you put it on, whether you're putting it on two, three layers of denim, whether you're putting it on um, something lightweight like a um, chiffon or a or a viscose. Um, it will stitch a perfect buttonhole every time. The buttonhole function on it, you basically, you can select the buttonhole that you want. So one of the things I love about the buttonhole on the Benina is if you go into, you select your buttonhole, there's a million different ones that you can do. If you select your buttonhole, you, there's a little thing here that says record. And if you tap here, it will actually come up with this screen. And it tells you that at the moment it's preset for a 14 millimeter button and it will create a 16 millimeter buttonhole. So it gives you one millimeter either side of the buttonhole so you can actually make sure that you've got enough space in that hole to put the 14 millimeter button through because you've got a millimeter either side of play so that you've got room to get your button through. Now this little button here that comes up here allows you to basically hold your button. I'm gonna use this bobbin because I don't have a button. But if you basically hold your button hole, sorry, if you hold your button, so this little thing here is if you hold your button up to this, you can then make, you can scroll with either of these and it will basically allow you to make the circle on the screen bigger or smaller. So you can measure your actual button on the screen. And then once you hit the same size as your button, it will tell you that you need a 21 mm, uh, you, you that your button measures 21 millimeters and that you need a 23 millimeter hole. And then when you come out of that, it then logs that you're doing a 23 millimeter hole to fit your 21 millimeter button and it will stitch out a 21 millimeter button until you tell it otherwise. So you can do 50 buttonholes that are all the same size that are gonna fit a bobbin shaped button through. So the fifth thing that I find an essential with my machine, my Benina, is the fact that it has a extension that is the ability to do embroidery. So right behind me here, underneath some um, microfiber cloths that I use to keep my cutting mat clean is the embroidery module that bolts onto this. This allows this machine to be turned into an embroidery machine which allows you to stitch out multiple designs and it allows you to stitch out fonts, all sorts, everything that you could probably want from an embroidery unit this machine will do. So it switches it from being a normal machine that will sew garments and different things like that to being able to use it as a full embroidery machine and that is my five handmade, not my five handmade essentials. I will try not to say that again more anymore in this video. That is my five essentials on my machines. So that is my five essential sewing machine um, wants and needs that are on two of my machines for different purposes. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video that explains some of the features of the two different machines that I've got and the reason why I use each machine for each feature that it does. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.